So let's talk about a new terror of the skies, perhaps winging its way towards a battlefield near you. I genuinely think that this guy could be one of the new strongest flyers in Warhammer 40k. Hello and welcome back to Warspets Tactics, where today we're talking flyers. Perhaps a class the Games Workshop just often really struggles to get right. They'll often either be so underwhelming that you just really don't want to take them, or basically so strong that you want to take as many of them as the game mode will permit. I think that's why they basically decided to cap the number of flyers in match play games at two, perhaps just to get around the idea that if flyers get good, then they're just worth spamming en masse. In any case, in this video I thought we'd talk about one of the new strongest flyers in all of 40k. I feel that we'll be seeing this guy on the tables quite a bit in the future, so let's look at what they can do. So certainly in strong contention for the very best flyer in Warhammer 40k is the Tyranid Harpy. Currently at time of recording, Games Workshop still hasn't actually released the Tyranid Codex yet, but we basically know the full details from that leaked version that was spoiled. It saw massive stat line increases for really quite a lot of the big monsters in the book, but perhaps one of the single most improved units in the Codex would go to the Harpy. Going from being a very underwhelming flyer that generally wasn't too worth it outside of mortal wound shenanigans and things in Crusher Stampede, to a truly incredibly dangerous datasheet in its own right. The Harpy basically both packs massive firepower, decent bombing abilities, and a couple of really nice advantages over other flyers of its type, that I think for the points cost would arguably make it the strongest in the game now. This winged terror of the skies would cost you 160 points base, or 170 if you upgrade two venom cannons, and clocks in with a fairly impressive stat line, has a big movement of 40, weapon skill and ballistic skill of 3 plus now, strength 6, toughness 7, a big 13 wounds, 4 attacks, leadership 8, and a 3 plus save. The main thing from that profile is that for a flyer it's really quite tough to shift. A lot of similarly pointed flyers are toughness 6 and either have fewer wounds than this or a worse save, but for the cost a toughness 7 flyer with 13 wounds, saving on a 3 plus, and of course getting the minus 1 to hit from the airborne rule, means it's really decently durable even if you can't hide it. Then damage wise it's kind of a triple threat. You've got some seriously heavy firepower for a manoeuvrable flyer, you've got a bombing ability, and you can also charge in to do a little bit of melee if you need to. And I think that between the three abilities, it's crazily powerful for the points cost, particularly because of the premium that you'd normally wind up paying for flyers, because they have, of course, a great movement of 40 inches, you're going to get line of sight on what you need to. And also, on top of that, it's ridiculously manoeuvrable as well, as it's allowed to pivot twice during its move rather than just the once. It's kind of similar to the Abmech Archaeopters in that rule, and even the minimum movement for flyers that it usually has isn't going to be an issue, as it can go into hover mode. Its movement just drops to 15 inches, but it means it's just crazily flexible if you need to jump at about close range. Moving on to the damage though, first we have the guns. I'd be tempted to pay the 10 points upgrade to get those heavy venom cannons, I think they're by far the better gun of the two, and that basically adds up to 6 shots at strength 9, AP-3 and damage 4. So basically guns that are arguably quite a lot better than LAS cannons, this thing packs 6 of them hitting on 3s on a crazily mobile platform. This alone potentially could be worth the price of a mission, being able to lay down some serious anti-tank firepower with giving your opponent not that much chance to hide from it is really quite a big threat. It also backs that up with some stinger salvos though, an anti-infantry gun at 24 inch range, 8 shots at strength 5, AP-1 and damage 1. Again, that's a gun that you can't really ignore. If your opponent's fielding one wound infantry, this will easily kill around two or three of them. Then we get onto its bombing ability, its spore mine cysts. These ones work on a unit that you've moved over. You roll one dice per model, or six dice per vehicle or monster, and for every roll of a four plus, they suffer one mortal wound to a maximum of ten dice. Typically with most targets that you fly over, you're going to be expecting around about two to five mortal wounds. Again, some very reliable damage output there, if you can get it to move over something. It might have a tiny bit less choice of these than certain other flyers that have a much bigger move characteristic, but still 40 inches is going to get you most of the way across the board. It's quite likely you're going to be able to land these on something, particularly with that double pivot move, which makes landing the bombs really easy. Then finally, you at least have the option of going into melee. That's not a choice for most flyers being able to charge things on the ground. You can charge enemy aircraft if they're in the sky, or if you go into hover mode, then you can charge things on the ground as well. It is only going to be 4 attacks at weapon skill 3, strength 6, AP-2 and damage 2, but still that should easily add up to a dead space marine or two, and that's certainly not nothing. Finally, if it doesn't actually manage to move over anything, and it doesn't manage to use its bombing ability, the damage output kind of isn't wasted, as you can use spore mine cysts 
and you can just randomly generate a unit of three spore mines that you don't have to pay reinforcement points for. That's really quite cool, meaning that the bombing ability can still be useful even if you choose to be a bit conservative with this, keep it back and just shoot for a couple of turns, and has another little annoying bit of area denial where your opponent might take a few mortal wounds if they move on to a certain point. I'd say the bombing ability is far more interesting than spawning those spore mines, but again that's a thing that most flyers don't get the option of. Overall the harp is just a spectacularly efficient datasheet, really tough, great shooting, a great bombing ability, and the option of melee, and a couple of little extras thrown in like spawning those spore mines, and the ability to pivot twice and do hover mode. Certainly a really good contender for best flyer in 40k. Of course that's really not the end of it, here's a few buffs and synergies that you can do with the harpy, and then we'll look at some expected damage output, and talking about its nearest rivals in flyers. For high fleet abilities, perhaps the most useful are the Kronos extra AP and extra 4 inch range, both handy, particularly on those stinger salvos, and I guess could be a potential target for that Symbiostorm power if they don't have any other targets for it. Otherwise most of the high fleets are maybe a little bit marginal benefits, Leviathan and Gorgon getting re-rolled can be certainly great on those heavy venom cannons, and high fleet Leviathan adds a whole load of options in terms of warlord traits and stratagems and things from that Octarius Codex supplement. If you are throwing it up the board, making it tougher with Catalyst could be reasonable, a 5 plus fail no pain and make it even harder to shift, or if you're hovering around you could maybe use the Maliceptor's diffusion power to reduce a bit of incoming damage, and you can potentially use a 1 command point ability to make wound rolls of 1 to 3 always fail, again that could be a really nice bit of pop up durability if you need a bit more if you're focused by heavy weapons. Otherwise for stratagems they can be a way of making it semi threatening in melee, Trampling Charge will usually average you 2 or more mortal wounds, and it's also 1 command point to re-roll wound rolls in melee, could be really quite good in getting the edge if you really do just need to chew up an enemy backfield objective holding unit maybe. I suspect that the Harpy will generally be getting out of range of synaptic imperatives relatively quickly, unless you buy the adaptive physiology for it, but it does seem like it will make great use of a zone throat 4 plus invul 1 or exploding 6s to hit, both could be pretty reasonable if it wants to cast up for a turn or two, maybe fly between one synapse provider and another. And then speaking of those adaptive physiology upgrades, Voracious Ammunition doesn't seem too bad for it, 15 points for some mortal wounds every time it shoots really isn't bad, I feel like if you've got any sort of shooty monsters this probably wants to be at least somewhere in your army. You can make it a synapse creature for 10 points, could be quite nice for one of them to maybe support another harpy as they're winging themselves around the board, or potentially you could buy it a 4 plus invul save all game with Dermic Symbiosis, that one's 25 points, so a little bit on the pricey side. Still though, that will make it an absolutely serious challenge to shift if it isn't going to get an invul save from the imperatives for much of the game. Finally, of course, Crusher Stampede is awesome for just about every monster in the Tyranid Codex. It does kind of remain to be seen if Games Workshop might do any sort of update to it when the book drops, but even at base, getting a 5 plus invul, minus 1 damage, and access to all the stratagems would be absolutely astounding, making an already ridiculously powerful datasheet even stronger. I guess we'll see whether Games Workshop decide to keep it around or not when the Tyranid Codex drops. Just for an idea, here's a look at the damage output from a Harpy. As I mentioned, provided you can bomb something, you're usually looking at somewhere around 3 or 5 mortal wounds on most targets, depending on what you can strike. Then with those Venom Cannons, you could expect somewhere around 2 or 3 heavy infantry, or around about 9 wounds to a standard vehicle, or about 5 wounds to 1 with a 5 plus invul and minus 1 damage. The Stinger Salvos could also get to work on light infantry, you'd expect around 2 or 3 of those to die. Then potentially melee wise, if it does get to charge, you might expect 1 or 2 infantry with 1 or 2 wounds. That's not likely to be happening first turn of course, but potentially a second turn strike if it does survive, and it wants to make itself a nuisance to enemy objective holders or something. Overall, just on average, you really could expect something like 130 points worth of models to be killed in just one turn. Pretty spectacular for a really fast moving, fairly durable flyer. It just seems like it'd be very very hard to go wrong with a pair of these in a Tyranid list, almost never mind whatever else you're taking. So that still begs the question whether or not it's really the best flyer in Warhammer 40k at the moment, and certainly compared with the vast vast majority of the field, the other options just really aren't anywhere near. The Space Marine ones aren't stand out even within the Marine Codex, and to be honest the vast majority of flyers in 40k at the moment are kind of underwhelming compared with their ground bound counterparts. I'd say the only serious contenders would probably be the Orc Flyers, I would likely have said the Admec ones too, but after they took a really hefty points nerf, I still think they're kind of usable, but just not really on the same kind of level. For the Orcs, really the viable contenders are the Wasp Bomb Blaster Jet or the Dacker Jet, 
The Wars Bomber typically cost you somewhere between 190 and 230 points, so a fair bit more than the Harpy, though at least in free booters, if you can trigger the plus 1 to hit benefit, it is going to be kicking out more anti-tank fire. With those crazy damaged D3 plus 3 teleport blasters, it's going to do around about 14 to 16 wounds to a toughness 7 vehicle. The defensive profile is kind of similar, a little bit less tough, a worse save, but it does have minus 1 damage from ramshackle. It can buy itself a 5 plus invul save from its force field, but in general I'd say that the Wasp Bomb is more fragile, but a bit harder hitting if you're playing freebooters. The other orc one that's really quite nice is the Dacker Jet, cheaper at 120 points with a whole load of anti-infantry fire. It isn't going to do you all that much damage against vehicles, but again with freebooters and speed wire it can hit ridiculously hard and will seriously chew up any infantry it can see. I think just on the raw stats alone though, never mind any combos, the Harpy really is already at this level I feel. And I feel that the additional benefits that it gets, such as being able to do melee, the sport mine thing, the manoeuvrability, and also having bombs plus guns, probably puts it slightly ahead of these, particularly with it costing a fair bit less than a fully upgraded was bomb. I would currently argue that it's probably the new king of the skies in Warhammer 40k. In any case, let me know what you think. Do you think that the Harpy is going to be the new flyer to fear in 40k? And are there any other spooky combos that I might have missed? Look forward to hearing your thoughts as always down in the comments below. If you've enjoyed the video, feel free to subscribe to Allspets Tactics, where we'll certainly keep the regular 40k videos coming, with new ones out just about every day. Finally, if you have been enjoying all the videos on the channel, I would just like to mention one way in which you can help support, and that's the Element Games affiliate link that I have down in the video description. Element Games is a UK based discount retailer, they generally give 10 to 20% off Games Workshop's miniatures and can just be a way to save a bit of money if you do live in the UK. The link is down in the video description. If you click that link and order anything through them, a small amount goes to help support Allspets Tactics without costing you any more whatsoever. Can just be a way to help support if you were thinking about buying something anyway. For people over in the USA and Canada, I do also have an Amazon link down there as well. Again, that works in much the same way. If you click the link before buying something from 40k or just anything in general, a small amount goes to help support the channel, and it doesn't cost you any more. A massive thank you to you guys who have been using those, it really does help out the channel quite a bit. In any case, an enormous thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.